everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise Tour. Today we're checking out the brand new Disney Wish. This is my new favorite ship on the high seas. I'm a big Disney fan, but I was absolutely blown away by the Disney Wish. There's so much to see and do. Three nights was not nearly enough uh, to enjoy our time on board, even though we had an absolutely amazing time. So let's get going. There's a ton to see. Just FYI, there are a lot of split decks on this ship, uh, starting with the very top deck, Deck 15. It's a part of the Tower Suite, which is located right there in one of the funnels on board the Disney Wish. So I can't actually access that and show you it. Uh, tons of tours on YouTube though, so if you're interested in something like that, you can take a look. Uh, but Deck 15 off limits, unless you're paying for the most expensive room on the ship. So we're gonna walk up to Deck 14. Um, so this is current Spar over to the left, Kind of one of your typical pool bars, nothing really too special there, especially when you compare it to other venues on board the Disney Wish. Uh, we're walking forward on this deck uh, and we're gonna get, have a nice little view of the Chip and Dale pool as well as out uh, sort of like a above the bridge view. Now, if you like these types of videos, you love cruise tours, you love Disney content, please give my channel a subscribe or at least like this video, really appreciate it. Now we really didn't go up here too much. There are a lot of sun chairs though. Uh, so if you are someone who wants to get away from it all, I recommend deck 14 forward. Uh, the chip and nail pool also pretty much stayed uh, empty during our voyage. And this is also a good spot to look at what the concierge level has, which is their own sun deck, own pool. Uh, this is connected to the concierge lounge. So unfortunately can't go in there to give a full tour because I was not sailing as a concierge member of this cruise. And so the only other part of deck 14 on board the Disney Wish is again in that tower suite. So we are done with deck 14 and deck 15. We're gonna make our way down to deck 13 to check out what is going on there. So as we make our way down the stairs, we're gonna reach deck 13. Not much going on here unless your concierge, this is where your concierge cabins and lounge and sun deck are. So we're gonna keep walking down to 12. 13 has more going on uh, in the aft part of the ship. So we will uh, focus our attention there. So right here you see the Toy Story Splash Zone. So this is great for those little kids that wanna get wet. We also have the Slidosaurus Rex and Trixie's Falls pool. So we're gonna check that out in just a second. Uh, but we're gonna walk to the aft part of the ship and check out what's going on here. So this deck kind of serves as an extension of the pool deck. Uh, there are some pools on this level. Uh, lots of smaller pools spread out all across the sun deck here. Really love that. Uh, I feel like uh, cruise ships that really just have one main pool ends up getting super crowded. This way people can kind of spread out. They also are able to cover those pools for all the deck parties that they have, uh, expanding some uh, you know standing room space for all the fireworks and the parades and all that stuff that's going on on deck. So the pools on this deck are Donald and Goofy's pool. Again, there's no real theme to these pools. They're just named for Disney characters. So uh, don't really uh, stress out if your kid's really into Mickey Mouse or something like that. Uh, you have, uh, you know, Pluto and Minnie have their own pool and Mickey Mouse is right below the funnel vision. That's covered a lot because it is a part of that main stage. So just keep that in mind. Um, but we're making our way down here to deck 11 because this is the main pool deck there's a lot to see here unfortunately there are a lot of uh, dead ends and kind of which ways that you have to go on this ship uh, it's just the result of them packing a ton of stuff on board so 
Uh, hang with me here. We're going to try and organize things as much as possible. So here is Joyful Sweets. This is themed to Inside Out. This is kind of your upcharge gelato Sunday candy store. Uh, so nothing really in here is free. There's a lot of cool hidden details though. So if you're into uh, the Uncharted Adventures uh, experience, which is an AR type experience on your app, there are some secrets in here. Uh, so check out the activities video that I'll have posted on the channel uh, if you want to see some of the details of that. So since we're on this deck, we're gonna go check out more food options. All the food options on board are pretty, is pretty much located in the aft part of the ship. So this is Marceline Market. Uh, you see the secret entrance to Vibe and the Hero Zone to the right there, that kind of blue neon going on. We'll check that out as well. But we're gonna check out what the buffet looks like. So it's open for breakfast and lunch. Uh, no dinner options, unfortunately. Everything's super high quality in here. Uh, if you love crab, if you love seafood, if you love high quality, healthy ingredients, they have it all here. Uh, it gets really busy. Um, I do think that they could have maybe made the walking space a little bit bigger, um, but we were able to find chairs and a table pretty easily, even during the very busy times, especially around breakfast when everyone's trying to get off the ship. Uh, that's kind of when it's super busy. There is a little deck in the back that you can get some fresh air while you eat. Uh, it really just depends on the type of day, if that's busy or not. Uh, there's also a bar and coffee shop uh, towards the front that we'll show you in a bit. So here's that bar in Marceline Market. They have full cocktail list as well as an espresso machine so you can get your upcharge coffees if you want. Something that I always do on a ship. I just feel like the uh, drip coffee is never really truly that good. So I always uh, kind of splurge on that, kind of get my Starbucks fix for the day. So while we're here on deck 11, we're gonna check out Dory's Forget-Me-Nots, which is opposite of Inside Out. I promise that we're gonna make our way up to Vibe and the Hero Zone here in a second. But this is for kind of your sun items. Uh, you know, you're near the pool, so you know, your sunscreens, etc. You can buy that as well as kind of your outdoor apparel merchandise. 
Uh, it's only really open when you're out of port though, so not really useful on this cruise since we didn't really have a sea day. Then you have a pool bar right here, you have Funnel Vision over there to the right, playing Disney movies all day, every day, as well as sports when it's like a big enough sporting event. To the right are the free soda machines, everything's included for a Disney cruise in terms of these like non-alcoholic drinks out of there. Uh, they have tea, coffee as well, so that's definitely a difference uh, than like a Royal Caribbean or a Princess, uh, those are all included. But now we're in the Festival of Foods, there's Donald's Cantina, they do kind of make your own burritos there, really awesome Mexican food. Uh, you have Daisy's Pizza Pies, so you have your, of course, your pizza options and those can vary. Uh, then we're coming up on Mickey Smoke Smokehouse, I believe. Um, really good barbecue, honestly, for the sea. Uh, so that was really awesome. Kind of had some pastrami brisket type options there. Then we're heading into Goofy's Grill, which has kind of your hot dogs and your burgers. And then you have Minnie's Ice Cream, which features your free ice cream options. So if you're someone who doesn't really need gelato or a sundae, but am, are content with soft serve, that is unlimited and free. And then the lookout is a uh, upcharge bar. And so now that we're back at this part of the ship, we're gonna head up one more floor and check out a little bit more of the Toy Story Splash Zone, as well as the Slide of Source Rex. So as you probably know, there is the Aqua Mouse on board, which is the really cool attraction at sea, uh, but Slide of Source Rex is more of your traditional water slide, definitely better for kind of those younger kids. Uh, definitely has less of a line as well. Uh, and then here's the uh, Trixie's Falls pool. Uh, so I love this because it has a cool waterfall feature right there. I mean, they really just pack all these really cool things into every single space on this ship. So now that we're on deck 12 back here, I will show you where the concierge lounge is if you do have access, so you can just at least see that. And then over near the splash zone again is Wheezy's Freezy's. It was closed when I was walking by, but this kind of has your smoothies, etc. Fills a full bar. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the aft part of the ship and check out Vibe and the Hero Zone. So Vibe and Hero Zone are really cool. Um, the Vibe is for teenagers and the Hero Zone's for everyone most of the time, though they do close it down for the different kids clubs and different ages. Uh, this is on deck 12. So during non-crazy hours, the Hero Zone kind of is like a sports court on board. It's all indoors, so even if it's a rainy day, you can still play some basketball. Uh, the second floor of it has some air hockey as well as some shuffleboard. And then they put in this awesome inflatable Incredibles uh, inflated course, which is sort of an obstacle course that people race uh, on, which is super fun. Now let's go check out Vibe. So Vibe 
is uh, the teen club, as I mentioned. Uh, it's a super cool space. I'm really jealous that I couldn't hang out here the whole time because they have these awesome windows uh, that let in a ton of natural light. So really a cool spot for those teenagers. Uh, they do have some open times for everyone, uh, but they're kind of few and far between, especially on the three night voyage. So make sure you check it out. Also located over here is the Rose, Enchante, and the Apollo Steakhouse. So these are the exclusive, especially adults only restaurants. These are an extra charge. These are not included uh, in your cruise. Uh, the Rose is open without a reservation though. It's just a bar, uh, but they have the $50 Rose cocktail that we did get. So check out the activities video on my channel and what we did on board. So every Disney ship has Apollo, but this is the Apollo Steakhouse. So there's a little bit more meat options on the menu, though a lot of the menu items are the same as what's on other Disney ships. And then Enchante replaces Remy on board. Uh, so this is all a Beauty and the Beast theme. Uh, really, really pretty. Uh, really just absolutely gorgeous space. So if you're into uh, you know, that fine dining experience, you're gonna be well taken care of on board the Disney Wish. So there's a shot of Apollo looking down the wine cellar there. And now we're gonna make our way into Enchanté. Just an absolutely gorgeous space. Very jealous of those that got to dine here. We did not have time to do so on this cruise, unfortunately. So we are gonna continue our tour on this deck. So there's the funnel vision. So you're pointed forward right now on deck 12. So now we're gonna head up to deck 13, check out where the Aqua Mouse is. This is the attraction at sea, which is funny enough, located right next to the adults only area and the Cove Bar and Cove Cafe, which are two of my favorite venues on the Disney Dream. Love the coffees there, love the bar. So let's check out what that looks like. We have a full ride through on the activities video on my channel for the Aqua Mouse, so be sure to check that out. But if you do want to ride without a line, I highly recommend getting on board early on embarkation day and sprinting straight for the Aqua Mouse without having to wait in too much of a line. So if you notice, the adults only area has sort of elevated deck chairs, they have more plush. Here's the only free hot tub on board the Disney Wish, kind of crazy. You'll see more hot tubs on this video though, because there are some in senses. The big draw for the adults only area on board the Disney Wish is of course this infinity pool. I love this. I wish we had a sea day to really try this out because uh, the infinity pool looking out on the wake of the ship gotta be really pretty. Though it is a little small so it probably can get packed. Uh, the Cove Bar over here is open most of the afternoon for all your adult beverages. And then the Cove Cafe has a light Moana theme and has your specialty coffees. Probably the best coffee on the ship in my opinion. One little, I think, design flaw here though is that this deck extends out but then ends at the Aqua Mouse and you have to double back and go all the way around the ship to get out of the adults area. I wish that there was a staircase or something that you could uh, get out of here without having to double back. So just keep that in mind. 
So we've completed the upper decks, now we're down on deck five. So we're in the forward part of the ship. This is Sense's Spa and Sense's Fitness. So I always do the spa tour on embarkation day, usually the best chance for me to check out what exactly is available in the spa. Uh, I really was excited to see what they do here because they de dedicate a lot of this deck to Sense's Spa. So of course you have your typical treatment rooms. Um, this ship has some really amazing looking rooms, including the couples suite, which you'll see in a second. Uh, it has its own jacuzzi. Uh, you usually get it for about two hours, including uh, one treatment. Uh, it's pretty pricey, but definitely worth the splurge if you're on like a honeymoon, or if you really just want to treat yourself. There's two rooms. Uh, the first one being the larger one and really just an amazing time. Uh, they have those water beds right there for your massage, which is really cool and relaxing. Is a really cool space. So now we're gonna enter the rainforest, which is an extra charge for guests. Uh, you have your teas and your sparkling waters and regular waters, spa waters, if you will. Uh, so these are, you know, you can come and go as you please if you buy the pass for your cruise. You have different showers, which is really cool. And then you also have uh, saunas, you have an ice room, and then you have a whole outdoor deck. So we're gonna check all of that out right now. Conveniently located right next to Senses Spa is the Senses Fitness Center. Quite the tongue twister, uh, but really nice gym on board. All brand new equipment, of course, it being a new ship. Uh, they have a little flexible space that you can have like a stretch room or TRX class. So really impressed with the gym here and it has a lot of natural light. So now we're going to continue our tour of Deck 5 with the Triton Lounge. So this is a cool space for like trivia, uh, different games for the families, uh, really really a nice spot. Not really a huge theme or anything, but I really liked how this room was laid out. I wish it was maybe a little bit bigger, um, but on our cruise it always fit enough people. Um, some of the bigger events are done right here in Luna, which is across the hallway. Uh, the Keg and Compass is the ship's sort of sports bar. Uh, it's got an awesome nautical kind of Nordic theme. If you're a fan of uh, Disney hidden details, this place is chock full. Really, really fun. So we're gonna keep hugging Luna, which has two stories to it. We're gonna check out a little bit more of that on deck number four. So on this side, we have the Royal Studio. This is kind of a private photography studio, so not really anything unless you are purchasing one of those packages. And here's our first look at what's called the Grand Hall. This is a big hub of activity on the ship. Really just an incredibly beautiful space, kind of has multi-functions. Uh, it's your first room that you see when you get on board. They have the cool stage right there that you see princesses and different shows happen. They have a whole 
Um, you know, main stage on deck three that they do a lot of games with, super, super fun. Here's Mickey's main sail. Uh, unfortunately, with our three night cruise, it's only open outside of port, so too much going on at night to really go check out that. Uh, but we, uh, it is on board and it's absolutely huge. There's the uh, Disney Vacation Club's room, so if you were interested in that, they'll try and pitch you uh, the experience there. You have your Wishing Star Cafe over to the left. So that's uh, you know close to the Wishing Star in the main uh, lobby. And they have an identical bar one deck below called the Enchanted Sword. And so right now we're actually walking into Arendelle though, which is one of the main restaurants on board. This is where the Frozen Adventure happens. This is absolutely an experience. It's unbelievable. Uh, really, really cool for the kids. Uh, great musicians, great singing, uh, really good food too. Uh, it's incredible. So if you want to see the full experience, uh, check out the activities uh, video that I have on the channel. So Arendelle kind of marks the end of the ship on this deck, so we're gonna make our way out of there and go check out Edge. So this is kind of the tweens club, uh, kind of similar to Vibe. Um, there's a lot of video games, a lot of active things for kids of that age group uh, that they I know they love on land. So uh, really cool space and cool for them to be able to be separate from you know the Oceaneers club, which may be a little too young for them. Um, really an awesome spot here. So a ton to see and do on this ship, so we're gonna keep going down this deck. More photo stuff here, Shutters, which is kind of the main Photoshop. Um, so if you like a photo, you can get it printed on you know canvas, etc. Lots of options there. And now we've made it to the other side of Luna on this deck. So now we're gonna make our way down to deck four for more activities, another full deck. So this part of the ship has a ton of entertainment. Uh, deck four is the top level of the Walt Disney Theater. We'll show you a shot of that on deck three, but they also have their two movie theaters on board. So they have the Neverland Cinema, themed to Peter Pan, of course, has its own really cool theme on the inside. And then Wonderland Cinema is on the other side. Uh, in between is Preludes, which is where you can get your popcorn before your show, any drinks, popcorn buckets, that sort of thing.
So now as we make our way out of that, we're gonna go check out the middle level of the Grand Hall. Here's the Bibbidi Boppity Boutique. Very popular, make your reservations well in advance of your cruise if you would like to join in the fun there. And then here's that Enchanted Sword Cafe. Another upcharge experience on the right is the Untangled Salon. So you can get your hair done, you can get nails done, that sort of thing is all themed a little bit to Tangled, but I would say a little bit more of an adult theme. So really great that they kind of separate that from the spa, put you more in the center of the ship. And then straight in the back here is the Marvel restaurant. Really a fun experience there. Uh, to get really the full feel of it though, you're gonna have to watch my activities and what we did video on the channel. So coming out of there, we have Hook's Barbary, which is really cool because it's both kind of a men's salon where you can get a shave, but also a speakeasy at night. Super, super cool. Definitely worth checking out. I uh, believe the hours were 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So I make a wrong turn here and double back, but guest services is over to the left side of this uh, deck. It's uh, always very popular, always has a really long line, so if you can avoid going to this part of the ship, I would. And then to the right here is Luna. So I've mentioned this a couple times, but this is where your bingo happens, this is where kind of your bigger game shows where a lot more people will attend. Really a cool space, I really liked it. And then Wonderland Cinema is over to the left here. So now we're making our way down to deck three. A lot of shops on this deck. Um, so you have the uh, Treasures Untold, which is a lot of high-end gifts. You have the Bayou restaurant uh, and kind of lounge here, which is cool. That's where they have beignets. They have a lot of New Orleans drinks, that sort of thing. And over to the right of it is the Hyperspace Lounge, which is the Star Wars bar on board and immensely popular, super, super cool. Just absolutely an incredible space and had a ton of fun in here. Over to the right is Nightingales. So this is your Cinderella themed bar. This is the kind of piano bar on board. Really a great vibe in there. Really love that. And then we have the Kids Club slide over here to the right down to Oceaneers Club, which we will ride in a second, I promise. But over to the left is the Grand Hall, and then since this was a maritime voyage, we had a nice gingerbread tree. And then straight up ahead is Roy's and Walt Disney's 1923 restaurant. So this is another main dining room. Uh, it's where kind of your main steakhouse. I thought the food was really excellent in here, actually. So uh, really a cool spot. Um, and that's kind of the dead end on this deck.
So, walking back towards where we started, to the right is where you enter the ship. You have the enchanted castle jewels, of course, your high end jewelry. Royal regalia, which is kind of your purses and that sort of thing. To the left is the other side of the bayou, so you can enter from either side. And they have live music there a lot at night. Then Once Upon a Time, which is the watch shop on board. And now we finally make it over to the Walt Disney Theater, which is absolutely massive and a big focal point of activity on the ship. So you have three Broadway shows during your voyage. Seize the Adventure, The Little Mermaid, and Aladdin. So now let's slide down to deck two, which is our final deck on this tour. So deck one is just really for getting off the ship as well as the medical center. So the Oceaneers Club is just absolutely uh, an excellent addition to the ship. I mean, I am absolutely blown away by everything in here. So we're gonna start our tour in the Imagineering Lab. So this is where a lot of arts and crafts happens. They have some classes for the kids. Uh, and then in the other room, you can actually design your own roller coaster, which is just absolutely mind blowing. If I was a kid, I'd be losing my mind. If you're a Disney Parks fan, there are tons of parks details in here, models of different ride vehicles, uh, character designs, super, super fun. So definitely check out an open house so you can at least look at uh, some of the cool details. And here's that design studio, so really amazing. They have the clock here with all the Disney parks of the times where they lay on Earth. You have some uh, attraction posters, you have a lot of props that were actually used in the parks. It's super, super cool. So this is the uh, Minnie's Captain's Bridge, I believe, and this is for sort of your younger guests. Uh, lots of little crawl areas, you can control the ship. Uh, so this is definitely for, you know, like six and under, basically. Um, really cool little area to, to hang out and play. And then that leads into the It's a Small World Nursery. Uh, so this is definitely for your smaller guests, like three and under. Uh, all these areas can be walled off separately from the rest of the club, so the kids all get their own space. Um, but there is a little area for even kids as young as six months old to hang out. Um, this is a slight upcharge. All the other kids clubs are free. So if you're a parent traveling with a young child, you can still get a little bit of adult time. And then over on this side still is Fairytale Hall. So these are three separate spaces that kids can play and hang out in. They have different activities going on. Uh, but you have Bell's Library, which is super cool. Uh, then you have a frozen area, and then you have the bedroom uh, from Tangled. So, I mean, if you're a kid and you've seen all these movies, this is just awesome to have on the ship. So arguably the other cool space on board is the Star Wars Cargo Bay, uh, which is across from all these awesome little bathrooms, cubbies. But here's Star Wars Cargo Bay. So if you've been to Galaxy's Edge, this will remind you a lot. Uh, they have some creatures that are from Galaxy's Edge on board. They do little creature uh, learn activities for the kids. It's super fun. 
I love this. Uh, really, really a cool uh, opportunity. And there's a little loft cat there. This cute little snail guy. Um, so uh, definitely check this out during the open house if you're a big Star Wars fan. And if you're a Marvel fan, the last room on this ship tour is going to really impress you. So this is Marvel Superhero Academy. You design your own suit and then you get to see what it looks like. Uh, it's really, really fun. And there's lots of cool details that refer back to the restaurant uh, that you dine at on board here. So definitely take a look at all the cool details here. Um, but thanks a lot for watching this tour. I really appreciate you making it all the way through. Uh, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.